Clarence Thomas has clearly established himself as the most corrupted member of the United States Supreme Court in its history. What we know about Clarence Thomas's unethical behavior has expanded exponentially this year, but the truth is, it just doesn't take much to be the most publicly corrupted member of the Supreme Court in history because precious few members of the Supreme Court have ever, ever been shown to have crossed an ethical line in any way. Clarence Thomas holds another distinction. The former law clerks of Clarence Thomas are a very loyal alumni group to each other and to Clarence Thomas. And they include some of the most incompetent people who have ever served as Supreme Court clerks. Two of them appeared on Fox tonight on the show hosted by one of them to discuss the criminal indictment of the other. John Eastman decided the safest place to make his television defense was on Laura Ingram's show where he knew he could get away with telling any lie that crossed his mind. Some people had urged that Vice President Pence simply had power to reject con uh, electors. Some people? Who? There was no way that the Fox audience was going to find out that the person who urged that was John Eastman himself. In Special Prosecutor Jack Smith's indictment of Donald Trump, John Eastman appears as co-conspirator two. Page 32 of that indictment says that on December 23rd, John Eastman, quote, circulated a two-page memorandum outlining a plan for the vice president to unlawfully declare the defendant, Donald Trump, the certified winner of the presidential election. I explicitly told Vice President Pence in the Oval Office on January 4th that even though it was an open issue under the circumstances we had, I thought it was the weaker argument and it would be foolish to exercise such power even if he had it. What I recommended, and I've said this repeatedly, is that he accede to requests from more than 100 state legislators in the swing states to give them a week to try and sort out the impact of what everybody acknowledged was illegality in the conduct of the election. He's lying. Page 34 of the indictment. On January 4th, defendant Trump held a meeting with co-conspirator John Eastman, the vice president, the vice president's chief of staff, and the vice president's counsel for the purpose of convincing the vice president, based on the defendant's knowingly false claims of election fraud, that the vice president should reject or send to the states Biden's legitimate electoral votes rather than count them. Defendant Trump deliberately excluded his White House counsel from the meeting because the White House counsel previously had pushed back on the defendant's false claims of election fraud. During the meeting, as reflected in the vice president's contemporaneous notes, defendant Trump made knowingly false claims of election fraud, including, bottom line, won every state by hundreds of thousands of votes and we won every state. Defendant Trump and co-conspirator two, John Eastman, then asked the vice president to either unilaterally reject the legitimate electors from the seven targeted states or send the question of which state slate was legitimate to the targeted states legislatures. When the vice president challenged co-conspirator two, John Eastman, on whether the proposal to return the question to the states was defensible, co-conspirator two, John Eastman, responded, well, nobody's tested it before. The vice president then told the defendant, did you hear that? Even your own counsel is not saying I have that authority. Defendant Trump responded, that's okay. I prefer the other suggestion of the vice president rejecting the electors unilater unilaterally. Page 35 of the indictment. On the morning of January 5th, at Defendant Trump's direction, the Vice President's Chief of Staff and the Vice President's Counsel met again with co-conspirator two, John Eastman, who now advocated that the Vice President do what the Defendant Trump had said he preferred the day before, unilaterally reject electors from the targeted states. The Vice President and the Vice President's Staff who were in those meetings with John Eastman taking notes, have all testified to the grand jury 
under oath and according to their testimony. John Eastman lied tonight on television when he said this. What I recommended, and I've said this repeatedly, is that he accede to requests from more than 100 state legislators in the swing states to give them a week to try and sort out the impact of what everybody acknowledged was illegality in the conduct of the election. There will be under oath testimony from the former vice president of the United States and his staff saying that John Eastman, quote, recommended that the vice president, quote, unilaterally reject electors from the targeted states. The last criminal action listed in Special Prosecutor Jack Smith's indictment of Donald Trump was committed by co-conspirator John Eastman late on the night of January 6th, after the attack on the Capitol and after the Congress had taken control of the Capitol again and had resumed the process of counting the electoral votes. On page 42 of the indictment, at 11.44 p.m., co-conspirator 2 John Eastman emailed the vice president's counsel advocating that the vice president violate the law and seek further delay of the certification. Co-conspirator 2 John Eastman wrote, I implore you to consider one more relatively minor violation of the Electoral Count Act and adjourn for 10 days to allow the legislatures to finish their investigations as well as to allow a full forensic audit of the massive amount of illegal activity that has occurred here. He was advocating breaking the law again at 11.44 p.m. on the night of January 6th, and he was lying about illegal activity that occurred in the election. Of course, John Eastman wasn't asked about that in the unsurprisingly incompetent line of questioning by one former Clarence Thomas law clerk to another.